be part of the dudes. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another ramble. Thank God. It is Monday. It's the 2nd of March, if you can believe that. Uh, it's 2015. What the, where the hell is 2015 going? It's March already. It's going too quick. Uh, it always goes quick. I think the older you get to, uh, time like flies by. When you're in school, like when I was in school, time never flew by. It was like March forever and then April forever. Uh, but then, of course, the summer would like fly by uh, because you're off. Uh, I'm back uh, for uh, another ramble. And also I'm back from uh, a trip that I went on last week with Duncan. I went on a trip with Duncan. Uh, we went to go uh, and uh, meet and greet and see Blizzard. Uh, they invited us out for uh, an Overwatch event. Now, unfortunately, uh, we um, we saw some stuff there that we're not allowed to talk about. Not allowed to talk about um, for a little while. Uh, but there will come a time where we can talk about it. And when that time comes, I will definitely get Duncan in. Uh, we'll do like a like an Overwatch ramble and talk about uh, what we think of Overwatch and some of the stuff that we saw at this event or whatever. Um, but for now, I can't talk about that. However... I can talk about Blizzard, and I could talk about the experience of going to Blizzard and going on a trip with Duncan and all that kind of stuff, because there's probably enough to talk about there. Uh, there's probably enough worth talking about. And also, it sort of um, it sort of makes me think, well, or made me think, or I am thinking about... It, it makes me think about game companies, uh, and sort of like, not not that they play like an important role... Uh, in your life, but it's one of those things like, it's kind of hard to explain. Yeah, when you were younger, certainly when I was younger, uh, I had Nintendos. So Nintendo was like the games company for me. I had the original NES. I had a Game Boy. Uh, I got a Game Boy when they came out. I got a Super Nintendo when Super Nintendo came out. I got a Nintendo 64. I never got a GameCube, sadly. Uh, I got a DS. You, you know, like. Basically, I, I never bothered with Sega stuff, uh, even though some people swore by, you know, um, the Master System, Sega Genesis, even the Dreamcast. Everybody was like nuts about that. Apparently, the Dreamcast survived a lot, lot, long, a lot, lot longer in Japan than it did in America. And Sega Saturn, remember that? I don't really remember that. But apparently, once again, in Japan, it was like huge and just like raged on for years or whatever. But in North America... Uh, and in Europe, I guess, uh, Saturn and Dreamcast, I don't think, uh, were around for too long, or at least uh, weren't as popular as they were um, in Asia. Anyway, um, so for me growing up, uh, I always sort of held Nintendo in uh, in a high esteem. I, I thought their sort of commitment to quality or whatever was amazing. They could do no wrong. They you know, made games and they had these franchises and uh, other companies made games for their systems, which just sat well with me. You know, I, I loved Capcom games when I was young. I loved all the Mega Man games. I loved Nintendo games. I loved playing all the Mario games. I, I loved Zelda and Link and all of those games as well. And uh, particularly, I loved Squaresoft games. Squaresoft, before it merged with... Uh, with Enix and became Square Enix in, I think it was like in the early 2000s, possibly. It, certainly in the 80s and the 90s, it was just Squaresoft. And Squaresoft were that kind of games company where it was just like, they could do no wrong. Everything that they put out uh, during a, a specific period of time, in my opinion, was, was amazing. I used to get Final Fantasy games or just Squaresoft games for Christmas, uh, pretty much every year, if there was a, a new game out that year. And that was like my thing. I would get um, some sort of Squaresoft game for Christmas, and then I would spend the next two weeks off school, sitting around, stinking up my place, never like washing or shower or anything. I would just sit there in my bed or on the couch, and I would play the shit out of whatever it was, whether it was like Final Fantasy, or, like Secret of Mana, or, like Chrono Trigger, or whatever it was that year that came out. I would play that. Um, and it was one of those things. So you, I, I would always, you know, anytime I saw Squaresoft, I'd be like, oh, Squaresoft, you know, it's going to be amazing. I'm, I'm really excited. I can't wait to get this game. I, I can't wait to I can't wait to read more about it. I, you know, I read all the manuals from back to front and just very excited. And I just, it was one of those companies for me where it was like Squaresoft can do no wrong. Even if they put out a game about like filleting Ronald Reagan or something like that. Yeah, I mean, 
come to think of it, that would be pretty amazing. But uh, you know what I mean? They could put out a game about anything, about like taking a, a shit in the woods or something, and I would still play it, and I would still love it, and I'm sure that there would be some amazing lore behind that and everything. And it, and it was great. And I think with Squaresoft, um, I don't think it was anything to do with them joining Enix or, or Square Enix or, or anything like that. Uh, I think I just sort of moved on from the Final Fantasy uh, franchise. I, I think the last one I played a lot of was Final Fantasy... Well, Final Fantasy VII, I loved. I played the whole thing start to finish, really enjoyed it. That was for the place, the original PlayStation. So this is going back a ways. Um, and then uh, Final Fantasy VIII, I, I played. I never really got into it because it was kind of weird. It was not what I was expecting following Final Fantasy VII. And I'm not sure, uh, because I'm not an expert on the subject, uh, well, anymore. I was, like, in the 90s. Final Fantasy, I fucking knew everything. I think I knew all the names of the monsters and, like, their special abilities and, like, everything. And like Medio and and all those uh, you know crazy Excaliburs and and stuff like that, but Final Fantasy VIII, uh, I think when it came out, it wasn't it wasn't received well. Possibly, I think a lot of people were a little bit disappointed with it. And maybe it's the case now that it's one of those things where, at the time, sorry, I'm like burping, uh, and um, and also old and suffering from like massive indigestion and jet lag right now. <laughs> sorry, I'm really sorry. Um, fact, so I. Like I was saying, I don't know if now Final Fantasy VIII is considered like some, you know, some gem that people were hard on at first or whatever, and, and now they love it. You'd have to, you'll have to let me know. Um, I haven't like looked it up or anything. I haven't looked into it because I, I, I don't really follow Final Fantasy series at all anymore. I think they're up to like Final Fantasy XV or something. A lot of it's online now or whatever, but I don't know much about it. I just remember that the NES and the SNES and then a couple of the PlayStation games were pretty damn good uh and i spent a, a a vast portion of my childhood playing these games and really enjoying the shit out of them really really liked them um and it made me think it made me think of squaresoft and their sort of like uh effect on me uh, because blizzard is the same way blizzard games have always had that effect on me and it i know it's like it's like such a fucking huge ramble been like seven minutes of me getting around to, to actually talking about Blizzard, which I set out to do at the start. But um, you need some context. So Squaresoft, when I was growing up, yeah, definitely. When I hit my teens, uh, I discovered Blizzard. Uh, and ever since then, Blizzard have been like my new game company where they can do no wrong. They're, every game they released, I'm excited as shit about. Um, I play to death. I mean, thousands of hours. I'm talking thousands and thousands of hours plowed into these games uh, that I just enjoy the shit out of. I can't get enough of them. Everything is just perfect to me. I love them. Um, so to get the opportunity to get invited to Blizzard, um, I mean, I've been there before. Uh, we, we went on a tour a couple of years ago uh, of the whole studio when we were out there for BlizzCon. We've been to BlizzCon a couple of times. Uh, but to actually get invited uh, to this to, you know, maybe check out um, some things to do with a new game that they just announced a couple of months ago and, and potentially meet some of these people that, you know, I've, I've known about for some time and, and always held in, in a high esteem because of, you know, the way that they design games or their contribution to the games that I love so much was fantastic. Holy shit. I mean, I was just, I couldn't believe it. It was just such a great opportunity and something that I would never uh, pass up because uh, I just, it goes so back, it goes so far back. My, my love for this, uh, for the games that this company makes uh, just goes so far back. Uh, and it really was amazing to get invited out there and to go out there and to experience that and to be sort of part of um, what, you know, they're doing and, and what's coming up with them and stuff like that. So um, Blizzard's track record is uh, amazing. If you're into Blizzard games, you'll know that they've got like these three sort of like Goliath franchises consisting of Warcraft, Starcraft and Diablo. Um, and the big news at BlizzCon this year, or sorry, last year, was uh, was a new franchise, Overwatch, which is completely new. It's a completely different type of game to what Blizzard would normally make. It's a first-person shooter. It's got all these cool heroes. It's got like this like pix, uh, Pixar sort of. Uh, I almost said pixel art. I'm so, I'm rambling so much that I'm like losing track of what I'm actually thinking about and saying. It's got like this Pixar sort of um, visual style to it, sort of like like this kind of like 
almost like a minimalistic, but like cartoony, like the Incredibles sort of feel to it. It looks a little bit like TF2 in some ways. I mean, it's not not to say that TF2 um, sort of like coined the um, the art style that they use sort of thing, but it's very effective in the type of game that it is and stuff like that. I think Overwatch is a little bit more detailed and, and stuff. Some of the heroes are a little bit more sort of fleshed out or whatever, um, but it's a newer game. I mean, TF2 has been out forever. Uh, and I don't think they're, I think they'll share some similarities, but I don't think they're going to be carbon copies of each other by any stretch of imagination. Um, but so it was huge news. Everybody's very excited about it, including me. Uh, but going back, um, for Blizzard, I think it was like 93 or 94. I can't remember. The first Warcraft came out, okay? The first Warcraft game was released for MS-DOS uh, when I was like 14 years old, okay? So 14 years old, I'm just starting high school. My friend turns up one day uh, with some discs in his bag and says, hey, my uncle just gave me this game. Uh, because back then games that came on discs copy protection wasn't what it is now you know you have like encryption and drm and all this fucking shit um you didn't have any of that back then uh you had discs and it was very easy to make copies of discs <laughs> and I, I hope nobody is listening to this from blizzard because I, I didn't actually i did buy a copy of the game uh later because i loved it so much but the first time i ever played it my friend brought in some discs that he copied or his uncle copied uh for him and he brought them in for me uh to install this game and try it out he said it was amazing uh, so I was like, well, whatever, that sounds pretty dumb. You know, what does it have in it? And he's like, oh, you know, you can make like wizards and they can summon like elementals and you have to like build a town and stuff like that and, and fight and everything. And I said, okay, well, I'll give it a try. I mean, it sounds okay. Now, I'd never played a game. I'd never played like an RTS game prior to that. And I think prior to that, really, I think there was a Dune RTS game at some point, possibly. I'm not sure who even made Dune, but I remember it being around um, slightly before Warcraft. Uh, but uh, aside from that, I can't remember any RTS games out. So I think Warcraft was one of the sort of like pioneering games for the RTS genre. Because I think Command & Conquer came out after. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong about that. Anyway, so I play Warcraft for the first time. I take it home. I install it um, using DOS because that's all we had back then. Uh, I think Windows 3.1 was out at the time, but it was weird. Like some people used it, but not everybody did. Like a lot of people just swore by DOS, uh, you know, like command line stuff and, and whatever. It was, it was it was easy. It was like a black screen with a cursor. But, you know, some people look at that and say, oh, my God, that's crazy. I would never use that. But back then it was like pretty common and it wasn't very hard to use. There was like a couple of commands to get things up and running or whatever. You used to have to use boot disks as well because there was like so little system memory. And sometimes you had to like reallocate resources using a boot disk so that you could get games to run and stuff like that. It was, it was like a whole different uh, thing back then, um, home PC gaming and whatever. But I, we got a, a PC when I was fairly young. I think I was about like 12 or 13. We got a PC uh, and I used to play the original Civilization, the first one uh, on it, to death. I would stay home from school sick and, and play it. And X-Wing as well. The original X-Wing game, holy fuck, was amazing. It was so good. It was the best game. We had a joystick for it and everything, and it was awesome. It was so good. Anyway, so I play, I play Warcraft for the first time, and, and I'm hooked. I'm just like, oh my god, this game is amazing. We played the shit out of it. We played the whole like campaign and stuff. Me and my friend would like exchange notes every day in class. Um, and in between like, you know, smoking and, and being like doofuses at, at high school or whatever. Um, and it was awesome. So like a year later or maybe, maybe more. Um, and I mean, that's pretty quick turnaround time for Blizzard, who was like known for taking their time releasing stuff or whatever. But I guess these games weren't like the big productions they are nowadays, you know, like cinematics and stuff. But having said that, Warcraft 2 came out like a year or so later and it had cinematics, um, you would do a, like a couple of campaign missions. Like it was like every four or five missions, you got like a, a cinematic. They were all like pretty funny, pretty cool. You know, like a lot of like um, you know, launching shit at like Zeppelins and stuff like that. Warcraft 2 came out anyway and was awesome. You could build like um, boats and shit in it. it. Looked a lot nicer. They The sort of like characters and stuff were much more fleshed out. The, the sort of lore and everything was amazing. Uh, the instruction manual for the game, like, because you used to have to buy box copies of games, had, like, all this art by Chris Metzen in it, who I guess was, like, uh, started life as, like, an artist for Blizzard and is now, like, pretty high up there as, like, he's, like, a like, vice president or whatever, the company. 
uh, and is in charge of like lore and story and all that kind of stuff. Um, so in the evenings when I wasn't playing uh, Warcraft 2, I would be just flicking through the instruction booklet and enjoying everything that was in there because it was awesome. It was like so much detail and so much, you could just tell that there was just so much um, put into it, so much more than just making a game to make money. You know, like the people that were making the, these games at the time were really passionate about it. And it really showed through like the quality, everything that came uh, with the game and everything that was in the game. It was an excellent game. Warcraft 2 was amazing. It was so good. Uh, and then there was an expansion for Warcraft 2. And this sort of like started off Blizzard's sort of like fascination with releasing a game and then releasing one or two expansions for the game after um, and charging you like full price for those expansions. Well, I mean, it's a very good business model, right? I mean, and the thing is the expansions when they came out were worth it too. Like it was... It was an extension to the game, but it, you almost got as much content as you did in the original game anyway. And then certainly later on in the later years when there was a lot of multiplayer, multiplayer um, PC gaming got really big. Uh, things like StarCraft, um, when Brood War came out, it introduced new elements uh, that would affect the multiplayer as well, like new units, new unit compositions, stuff like that. Like the original StarCraft, when it came out, you could basically just build, like if you were Protoss, you could just build millions of Dragoons and um, and automatically just have them rally in a guy's base. And that's how you played the original StarCraft. It was only when Brood War came out and it sort of introduced like uh, other units like medics and like and, and other stuff like that where uh, you, you, you couldn't really do that anymore. Or somebody could just like really beat the pants off of you by actually using proper unit compositions and stuff like that. Uh, it was good. It was good fun. Um, so for me, it's always been it's always been Blizzard since my early teens. I've always been really sort of like um, a big fanboy of the company. I've always really loved the games. I mean, everything that I do now is off the back of uh, my time spent in World of Warcraft with people like Lewis and Simon and all my other friends um, being in the same guild, raiding together, just uh, plowing thousands and thousands of hours into Blizzard games. And here we are now uh, doing like all of this stuff for a living. So uh, a lot to be thankful for. Um, but... Again, getting to go out to their headquarters and visiting with them uh, was awesome. We had like a little tour of the studio, which we've had before. Um, it wasn't as in-depth. We went on a studio tour about two years ago and we saw absolutely everything. We were taken everywhere. We saw everything. It was really awesome. Um, this time it was uh, more to do with Overwatch. So we were sort of like confined to uh, the Overwatch and we were in a much bigger group than the first time that we went as well. Um, but it was it was really great. I mean, Blizzard sort of treat you really well. We got to talk to like a lot of cool people, uh, a lot of people that we'd never met before and some people that we'd met at BlizzCon and stuff that we got to catch up with as well. Um, and they just do a really good job of sort of making you feel um, special. Like, you know, you, you feel like you're an invited guest and that they've sort of taken the time to get all the details right and, you know, sort everything out for you and stuff. And the whole trip was awesome. It was very short. Uh, we were there for, I think we, ground time in LA was a day and a half, a full day and a half. Uh, and the half day was arriving in LA after an 11 hour flight in the afternoon and then sort of getting to the hotel, uh, going out for dinner uh, and then sleeping because we hadn't slept for like, I don't know, 24 hours or whatever. Uh, and then the next day we had some quiet time in the morning. And then in the afternoon we went to this event thing at the uh, Blizzard campus. Um, but all in all, it was totally worth doing. And I would totally do something like that again, even if it was just for a day or whatever. Because like I said, it's an opportunity that you would never want to pass up, especially if you were uh, that into sort of the, the same stuff that I'm into. I'm sure a couple of you listening are, are probably feel the same, if not more uh, than I do about a lot of this stuff and probably have similar experiences or whatever. Um, so you can imagine. I mean, I never thought before I did any of this stuff that I would ever get the chance to visit Blizzard, let alone go to BlizzCon. I always wanted to go. Um, but it's kind of hard when you don't have, um, you know, if you're just working a job or, you know, you're just living a life or whatever... Uh, that's nothing to do with uh, video games or the video game industry uh, whatsoever. It's kind of hard to justify. You know, you have to take a, a really big trip uh, to somewhere very far away. It's pretty expensive to stay in a hotel for the entire time you're there. It's pretty expensive to get tickets to actually go to the event. Um, and it's a very busy event, too. Um, BlizzCon, I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, where, you know, you end up having to queue up uh, a lot for stuff, you know, if you want to play the games, um, you have to queue up to get good seats for like the opening ceremony and stuff like that. 
And depending on if you're married, you might be married to somebody who's not into games at all. So it might be difficult for you to convince them to come along with you or whatever. You might have to go alone. You might have to coordinate going with friends or whatever. And it's it's difficult. And I, I thought at one point that it was something that I would love to do, but I probably realistically never really bothered to do because, you know, making the the moon and the stars align that way so that everybody could go to BlizzCon is, is probably a, a tough thing to do. I know some people do it, but I'm notoriously lazy uh, and would have never have done it. But I've had the opportunity through what I do uh, to do it, and I've, and I've really sort of taken advantage of that and make sure that I go like every year if, if the opportunity's there and anything to do with Blizzard I, I take as well because uh, I, I love their stuff. I love their games. I, I just love their commitment to their games, and I love how they sort of put so much into the games. So like even just like the cinematics and, and everything. It's just... It's just amazing that just so, so, such a high quality, such a high standard uh, for everything. And I hope that that continues on. And it seems to be. I mean, if you look at um, all of their past games and everything that they've got um, coming up, uh, it doesn't, they don't seem to be slowing down. If anything, actually, this year, they've probably announced more games um, in the past two years than they have in like sort of the past. Um, 20 <laughs> combined, which is crazy. I mean, Heroes of the Storm is coming up. Overwatch is probably like somewhat around the corner, I guess. I don't know how long it's going to take to come out, but Heroes of the Storm is pretty close. That's still a new game. It's like in closed beta now. Um, there's been a new uh, World of Warcraft expansion. There's likely to be another one coming up like fairly soon. There's Hearthstone to play. Diablo 3's just had an expansion and they've just introduced like this seasons feature which keeps it fresh, keeps people coming back to play it and stuff like that. So really, Blizzard have me covered in terms of games. I mean, I'm not saying that there's no other games out there because there are. There's like a million great games out there to play, but... Um, when I open my Battle.net launcher, I've always got something to play. And always, there's always something that I, I want to go back and play or that I'm currently playing. Um, so, I mean, Blizzard definitely have me covered. And, you know, here's the storm I'll probably play uh, when it's out. I've been playing it a bit in beta. I'll most definitely play Overwatch when it's out because I like games like that. And the fact that they're sort of like punchier games you can get in. Here's the storm the same. Games don't last very long. It's not your typical MOBA games like uh, League of Legends and Dota, where games l tend to last a lot longer. Um, you can you can get in there and play a game in like half an hour pretty easily, and and that's nice actually. Uh, one thing that I don't really like about Dota is the fact that sometimes because you can't concede a game, uh, sometimes games just stretch on for like seventy minutes. And I know that that's something that happens at like really low MMR levels because I am at a low M MMR level. And if I solo queue and I'm on a team where like not everybody is doing stuff that they should be doing, including myself. Then you get this situation where you're in a game that lasts for like 75 minutes or whatever. And like my attention span is awful. Like I'm dead after like 20 minutes. Like, you know, if things aren't going well or we're not snowballing or whatever, like I just completely lose interest. And I, I'm like alt tabbing and reading like, I don't know, not even anything fun to read. Like I, just at the, that point, I'm just so depressed. I'm just like looking up stuff on on the internet to like further depress me and um and just try to get through like this 75 minute game of of dota or whatever uh but having said that i mean i do love dota and uh when i do and when i do get in the mood to play it i tend to play it a lot holy jesus uh i've just looked at the clock it's like 23 minutes now of um non-stop rant i don't even know if that was interesting i'm sorry if that wasn't interesting i just thought i would share my thoughts on squaresoft uh, in particular and blizzard uh, because i'd just been to an event and i apologize i i i'm sorry that i can't really say more uh, we you know we've we were told that we weren't really allowed to talk too much about the actual event itself um, but I mean, if there's anything that you want to know about going to Blizzard or or BlizzCon or Duncan Jones from the Ogs cast, who I spent some time with, um, let me know. If there's anything that I didn't mention in this uh, this time, um, leave me like a comment or something on Reddit or whatever. If there's any questions or burning burning questions that you have to ask, um, feel free because I will answer them if I can. I mean, if they're not related to something that I'm not allowed to talk about or whatever. Um, I, two 11-hour flights, basically, in the space of three days. You know what I did the whole time? I played fucking SimCity Build It, which is like the new iOS SimCity game. I don't know if you've heard of it. It looks exactly like the new SimCity PC game. Uh, surprisingly, it looks very nice, actually. 
Uh, but it's got the it's got the typical fucking EA iOS. Well, it's not even just EA. I mean, it's unfair to say that it's just EA that does it because every iOS game is plagued with this fucking bullshit. All the fucking time gated pay gated stuff you know like if you want to because in this game it doesn't work the same way that SimCity works on the pc SimCity on, on the pc you just build stuff and there's a natural flow to it and you unlock stuff as you go and it all feels very nice and coherent or whatever well to some extent uh the ios game you you build something and it's like oh you need to build a hammer so that you can uh build this thing and that's going to take 45 minutes or you can speed up the process by buying simbux for you know you can have 200 simbux for 39.99 or whatever and it's uh it's okay i mean the way that these games are meant to be played is that you know you check on them a couple of times a day or whatever um get some you know get some stuff launched off to you know chew away time and then check back a couple hours later and the stuff is done you do it. but when you're on a 10 hour flight and you you don't really have much else to do you're like sort of like checking back very often and no progress is being made and so you're just like getting really frustrated because all you want to do is build like a skyscraper and that takes days it, like it literally fucking takes days to get to that point in that game unless you pay i mean I'm I'm happy to say that I haven't paid any money uh, for that game, and I have no intention whatsoever. I mean, Hearthstone, I used to say, oh, I'm never going to pay a cent for Hearthstone or whatever. And then in the end, I did buy packs because you do, because it's actually the the action of opening packs and getting cards is so well done. It just, you're almost forced into it in the end. And whereas Hearthstone... It can be argued that it's pay to win. I mean, a lot of people um, have arguments for and against it. I personally don't really think that it's necessarily pay to win. I think that I think that there should be more rewards in the game uh, to you know to get packs and open cards and, and build your collection a little bit faster that don't require money. But I, I think to actually play the game and win, I don't think you need all of these like legendary cards or whatever necessarily if if you play the game very well. Um, I mean, I don't play the game very well, uh, hence dropping money on buying uh, packs of cards and building my collection but that's fine I, I feel like that's fine i feel like it's a it's a good game and it deserves you know to have some money thrown at it every once in a while and that's fine i can live with that sim city build it i think it's okay it's fun uh, i've had fun playing it i mean it's it's probably one of the only ios games that i've continued playing post a trip uh, so i started playing it at the start of the trip and now that i'm back i've played it you know like occasionally checking on stuff building stuff or whatever um just sort of like trolling through the <laughs> trolling through like the online market thing uh and buying stuff uh to save time uh buying stuff with in-game currency not with that uh, with real money um so i mean it's okay like uh, i don't think it's like the best game but then again there's well say that i, I i've had like a bit of a revelation when it comes to like ios games because I got Knights of Pen and Paper, which I was playing on my trip as well, which is excellent. I mean, it's an excellent PC game, and it works perfectly for iOS. It's, it's really fucking good. Um, Duncan downloaded uh, Banner Saga, the whole game, for iOS, and it's amazing. It plays just like it does on the PCs. It was like, I mean, it's a bit more expensive than most, but then again, it's a full fucking game that you can buy like on Steam or whatever, and I own it on Steam and I played it. Um, but I mean, to pass the time, holy shit, talk about good. Uh, and then a couple of other games that which were really good too, like Monument Valley. I was playing that. It's very fun. It's like that weird fucking, you got to like turn stairs around and make dudes walk upside down uh, and sort of like solve the puzzle and get your princess person uh, to the end. That uh, was very fun. But yeah, SimCity build it. Pfft, if you like SimCity, I mean, I'm a fucking sucker for city builder games. Um, so like I'll always at least try them. Uh, it's not bad, but... I wouldn't say it's worth spending money on. Um, I mean, if you have spent money on it, don't feel too bad because if that's your bag, that's fine. But me personally, I would never spend money on that and I probably wouldn't recommend people to spend money on it. But it, you can play it without spending money on it if you're willing to wait for like fucking 10 years for a skyscraper to build or whatever. And it just so happens that I'm crazy enough to do that. So one day I'll have a skyscraper. I'll be really, really happy with it. Um, and then I'll probably just forget about the game. Oh, 
and I was also playing a game called <laughs> Adventure Capitalist, which is like a cookie clicker game. It's a congregate game. Um, you can download it for free. It's for the iOS. Um, and um, you can get boosts just by watching like these shitty bingo ads every four hours or whatever, which is like no problem. Just sit, just fucking sit through a 10 second bingo ad and you get like double profits or whatever. So if you like cookie clicker, you might like that. Look at look at me. I've got all the I've got all the hookups. I've got all the hookups and all the recommendations uh, on the 2nd of March 2015 for cool iOS games that I played while I was on a trip. And also, if you want to talk about how great Blizzard is. I'm always up for that too. And Squaresoft, circa 1987 or 8 to 1998, maybe, possibly beyond. I have no idea. Um, I'm, I'm up for talking about that too. Um, but for now, I will probably leave you. I don't actually time these, by the way. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you shouldn't try to fit a ramble into a clock time or whatever. I'm, I'm not actually doing that. Um, if I had more to say, I would quite happily ramble on and on and on for hours and hours and hours. It just so happens that I've pretty much said all that I need to say uh, in this update. Oh, actually, I do need to make an update um, and, then, um, and then I'll be done. But it just so happens that those always uh, end up being around half an hour give or take sometimes they're a bit longer um but yeah now i'm back so now's the time for like the youtube channel update i should probably get like something what that comes in is like youtube channel with like music and everything no not really i don't need to do these like all the time but it just because i've been away i've been away for like a week uh and when i'm away for a week uh, i'm at the mercy of the youtube content scheduler which works sometimes and other times doesn't work. Um, so this is just like batch recorded stuff that uh, I can put up to, to fill in the gaps while I'm aware or whatever. So you probably noticed that there was no new Grim Fandango uh, or Fallout last week. Um, that will resume. It'll resume tomorrow on Tuesday uh, when I've had a chance to actually record some um, and edit some and post some and schedule some. All those things. Um, but it, it will happen and uh, there'll be a couple of new episodes of each this week and then going uh, forward into the next couple of weeks uh, we'll finish them off grim fandango is very fun uh follow very fun actually while i was way at blizzard i met um one of the i can't remember his name now i can't remember his name he used to work with uh this guy uh leonard boyarski who works uh on the diablo 3 team now at blizzard um they worked together on the original Fallout. They were part of the original Fallout development team. And I think uh, the guy I was speaking to also moved on uh, to work on Fallout 2. Uh, and I, I'm not sure if Leonard did uh, or not. I met Leonard uh, in Paris uh, last year when we, went to the, when we went to Blizzard to talk about Reaper of Souls when it was uh, not, not yet released. Um, and he's like the head of uh, like world story lore... Uh, stuff to do with uh, with Diablo 3 uh, now at Blizzard. Um, but it was really cool uh, talking to a guy who developed a game that I'm currently playing uh, and part of a franchise that uh, I really I really love. I really love the whole Fallout um, franchise, the, the setting, everything about it. I'm really enjoying Fallout 1, which I'd never played before. Uh, and I intend on playing Fallout 2 as well, which um, a lot of people seem to say is probably the best Fallout. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, but it was really cool actually meeting. Uh, I didn't. I never realized when I met uh, Leonard the first time uh, that he had worked on Fallout. It was only after meeting this guy this time uh, that I realized that uh, that was the case. So like all these like old school devs uh, that used to work for like Interplay and all these other companies like in the in the nineties or whatever, uh, now working at Blizzard and doing doing good work uh, on on good games still. So they went from making good games to carrying on making good games, which is a nice thing, isn't it? It's nice to think that these guys have sort of like uh, made careers out of making good games instead of having to work on games that maybe aren't as good or whatever. But it sort of like begs the question, like if you're working on something and you work really hard on it and you believe in it, whether or not anyone thinks it's good or not, uh, you still think it's really good, right? Because you've spent all this time working on it and you've you, you put a lot of like passion and you've infused a lot of yourself into it, not like bio biological stuff, but like, you know what I mean? Like you've, you've just like gone above and beyond uh, to do this stuff. 
and you feel really good about it. And maybe sometimes games released and people are like, oh, this game is fucking garbage. You, you piece of shit. What were you thinking? And you're like, oh, fuck. I really worked hard on it. I mean, that's just the way it goes, unfortunately. But I just think it's kind of cool that those guys have just sort of moved around and now they work for, uh, for Blizzard and stuff. And that's pretty awesome. Um, so um, those series will continue this week. Um, Grim Fandango and Fallout. That's probably some new stuff coming up this week as well. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, and some evenings with sips. There's definitely one planned for this week. It might not be out until the weekend, though. Um, oh, man. It's, so, it's going to be so good, too. Well, the video is probably not going to be very good. But the game is fucking awesome. Uh, but I won't spoil it because uh, that'll be like later in the week or whatever. So some stuff to look forward to, if that's your thing. If you actually look forward to my videos. I think uh, for me... I think my mom is the only person who actually looks forward to them. And I don't even think she really likes to watch them. I think just because we don't really talk like as much as we should, because when you move out of your house and stuff, you don't always like talk to your parents. I don't know about you guys, but so like my mom listens to videos cause she makes it, <laughs> it's like, it's like talking to me every day. Uh, but there you go. It, it's, it's kind of weird. Um, so I, I always just assume that it's just my mom is the only person out there who actually looks forward to like, um, my videos coming out. I don't even know if she looks forward to them. I think she just feels like she has to watch them now because we've got like some sort of agreement. Don't tell anyone. Um, but yeah, so there we go. I think that's uh, probably as much update as I need to give anyway. Um, but I was away. I had fun. I had a really good time. I'm glad to be back. Um, but I would go again in a heartbeat, uh, if I was invited back. And, um, and yeah, we will, uh, we will continue to play Fallout uh, and Grim Fandango and some other shit because, holy shit, there's actually a couple of games around now that uh, I genuinely want to play uh, and keep playing. So, um, so there you go. It's a bit of a change. Past couple of months, I've been like in, in like sort of a slump, a gaming slump. Uh, but now I feel like uh, I'm picking it back up and getting very excited once again for games and playing through them and just having a having a good old whale of a time. So there you go. Great. All right. Well, thanks for listening as usual. I hope it wasn't too rambly. I hope it wasn't too boring uh, as usual. I always think that these are boring. Uh, if I ever have to listen back to them and stuff, I'm always thinking, oh, Jesus, God, you're so boring. What the hell are you talking about and stuff? Um, but you have to let me know. If you think it's boring, let me know. If you don't think it's boring, let me know. Reddit, uh, Twitter, uh, YouTube comment section. I still read all of them. Um, so there you go. Great. Well, I hope you're all well. I hope you all have a good week. Uh, we'll do another ramble with, uh, with Duncan once we can talk about Overwatch stuff, which will be cool because there's lots to talk about. Uh, and then in the meantime, uh, we'll try to get Lewis and Terps back on as well because this, I think this is the second ramble in a row where it's just me. Um, and it's fun to have people in sometimes, but equally, it's probably fun to do solo ones too. So there you go. Great. All right. Well, um, like I said, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And, um, I'll see you next time. I want to be part of the